It's a bit special this pit to be honest with you. Full of rumour and mystery local, it steeps in it. If I had to guess, I'd guess somewhere around 35, 40 fish, no more than 50. And when you think you've got 200 acres of water and I reckon 60% of it is out of bounds, you are kind of up against it. In that bit of marginal weed before me in the spot, I'd have turned up there's a couple of tails sat there. They're in the area. Rod just pulled around and my hand's still on the clip. It's took me a second to realise what's going on. And then they're just getting stripped down the lake, stripped down the lake, stripped down the lake. One's bump on the spot. Then another on the spot. Then another on the spot. You've just got to get it into your head that even when you don't catch, you can still win. Like, just look at that sun coming up there, for example. At the end of the day, I've won now, regardless of whether I catch one or not. Try and strip it up quick. I ideally don't want to be changing my hook if I don't have to. Try and keep it off that shelf. When you get out along though, it's quite flat, quite silty, quite quite a soft bottom, but you've got a big shelf. With this water currently being up, the shelf's even steeper, so to speak. Try and just protect that hook point because if I need to change it, I need to change it, but I'd ideally not want a fresh hook every time I cast it out. I'd love the three years I've done on here, and this is the fourth year, but I've not really been on here much. I think it's just losing the love. At the end of the day, I do really enjoy just being out here, being wild, just being left alone, having the lake to yourself almost, but it started getting busier, and out of like 30 odd fish between me and my dad and I, mate, most of them are recaptures and most of them are small. And as much as I love catching them small fish, as an angler, of course, we always want a few bigger ones, don't we? So I started looking further afield. I fished a few other different pits, my dad had had a good fish, just shy of 40 pounds, but it was a bit bit too far to get to to campaign, really, with the time that we had. Fished a few other different waters, but was just kind of flitting about, couldn't really get me head into anything. And then I found out about another lake, which out of respect for the lads, I won't really name, because there's a few nice lads on there who I know and who I get on quite well with. But it's another big pit, not quite 200 acres, but it's still 70, 80 acres-ish. Meant to be about 50 fish in there, quite tricky. So we ended up jumping on there just for just to try and catch one each out. The idea wasn't really to stay on there because it was a bit too busy. The fish were named. It wasn't really something that we thought we'd have enjoyed. And the first morning on the lake, we'd seen two shoals out longer, about 300 yards. And bear in mind, we've been sat in there for three years. I hardly ever really seen shoals. The only real times you've seen shoals, you caught fish. It was game on, we was buzzing. It was just like a fresh awakening. You're not used to seeing anything. It's can get a bit stale on the 200 acre at times when you're trying to find them and you can't find them and you don't have a clue what to do with yourself. And when you're seeing two shows on your first morning out, out long, it's it's a bit refreshing. So we moved over to where we'd seen them and towed them out, I think it was 305 yards, big leads, um, small handful of bait, they've not really got the quantity of nuisance fish or bream that you've got in here, so you, you don't really need that mass baiting to try and draw them in. You can kind of keep your rods in. So we towed a couple out long and it was in about two hours, my dad had had one, an original, kind of like one out of air, covered in starburst scales. Uh, I think it was a low mid 20, but a not a big one again, but a really cool fish. And what originally made me want to go there was I'd seen a picture of one real like purple common, pink common, really cool fish. And then I'd seen a couple other pictures of some even bigger fish still since I'd seen that picture. But I'd always put it on the back burner as a place that I might one day fish, but I'm not 100% sure because it's a bit busy and I didn't know if it was funny for me, but anyway, I knew there was a few nice fish in there and I thought, but yeah, we just caught one quite quickly. And then probably an hour later, my dad's had another one, another smaller common, but we was getting amongst a few fish. And at the end of the day, I knew that there was better ones in this one, whereas the 200 acre, it was just pretty much myths and rumors. Whether it was rumor or reality, I still can't tell you now four years later, but I can have a good guess, but I don't think they're in, but this place I knew they was in. So we ended up going back on the week later, found them absolutely everywhere, but it was scorching for like the back end of September. It was, I think it was like 20 or the upper 20s. It was mega warm. There was fish just everywhere all on the surface. You could see them, but, and you could see them good fish as well. Sat like 10 foot from the side, but they just weren't playing ball. They weren't interested. 
and then the weather cooled down a couple of days later and we managed to wangle five nights off work. We went on and I think that we had something along the lines of like six fish in five nights and the lake hadn't done a fish for like two months. So we've had like round about eight fish now. Started off with, I had my first one, another one that looked like it was from here, like a proper dolphin covered in, it like a dolphin covered in scars, starburst scales, only a small and I think made up a double, but a really cool, it looked, it looked like it belonged in here, looks almost like spitting my dad's first fish from here, just a real cool old carp. And then I had another take out longer, and obviously you have to go out in the boat to land these, you've got boys out there, you've got a few snags, you don't really want to be trying to drag them back in 300 yards, if the kite left or kite right it's pretty much game over, so you'd have the engine on the boat and as soon as you duck one you jump straight out in the boat, rod between your legs and you fly out there full speed trying to keep the slack up, get out level with the fish and then if you're near boys there's no real danger then because you're level with the fish, you just wanted to get out there near them quick so they're not in danger and you're not risking losing them and all the boats are out, all, all the canoeists and you could tell this is a much better fish, gin clear, of playing it in about 12 foot of water and you could see it twisting, turning, flanking, you could see your bait hanging out its mouth and I'd only just put this small on back and you're watching it twist and turn, two canoeists come over and held onto the side of the boat and joined the battle with me, they wanted to watch it because they'd never really seen anyone playing a fish in there before, they'd only ever seen like little pike and little perch and so what, so these two canoeists are holding onto the side of the boat as I'm playing this midder, this midder's towing me round, must have been a 15 minute battle, could see the fish the whole time, gin clear water as it twists, turns, flanks under the boat, managed to land that and that was um, a mid-20 midder, but like a proper old crusty one, even though it's not a ridiculously sized, like ridiculous sized fish, compared to what I've been catching out of the 200 acre, it was substantially much bigger. Three reds left in the water, slow take, most epic boat battle I'm talking, 15 minutes just dragging me down, I could see it under the water. 26, 26, 8. Half a mega one, can't show you the other side if it doesn't try and do one. 26, 8. That's the fourth fish now in the eighth height. I've just gone over my waders. I'm absolutely soaked through. That's the fourth fish between us in the eighth night. My dad did a 20 and a 16. I've had a 15 and a 26 and a half. It's a mega one now, didn't it? Mwah. Slip that back. Then I think he had another smaller common after that, it, during the night, uh, just as it was coming light, so I'd sacked it up to get pictures, just a cool little small common with like a, sli like a slice on its tail and stuff. But I ended up having to let that go without really a quick picture. I got a quick picture, but my camera lens was all misted over and that, and the reason he had to let it go was because my dad needed the sack for something um, a little bit more special, should we say. As I was about to get it out, he's had a take, he's gone out in the boat 300 yards playing this fish. He's on his way back in and he's shouting, it's a good one, it's a good one. And it was just this big old deep bellied mirror, like proper. It didn't really look like the same kind of strain with them starbursts and I didn't really have them. But it was just this big deep bellied mirror. Ended up going 30 pound. So from round here, I know obviously down south and that 30 pound, there's not really much of anything, but from up north, especially on a big pit that's not been stocked, it's not a day ticket, it's not been stocked. It's not been like baited heavily, it's not seen bait constantly. It's almost like a wild pit. And from up north, a 30 pounder from a wild pit is a really good fish. From a day ticket, it's a good fish. Or a syndicate, never mind, like a wild pit. So we was buzzing with that, especially after spending three years on the 200 acre and having nothing even close to that size. And it's one we didn't even know about. So it makes you wonder then how many actually good fish could be in there that you don't even know about. Perch was the 200 acre, it was just pretty much myths and rumours. I knew that there was better ones in this one. We put a lot of effort in. If we thought it was good, we'd quit jobs, we'd sacrifice stuff. Three reds left in the water, slow take. Most epic boat battle I'm talking. 15 minutes just dragging me down. From up north, a 30 pounder from a wild pit is a really good fish. From a day ticket, it's a good fish. Or a syndicate, never mind, like a wild pit. Tips just darked over, bat leads picked up out the water and line kind of starts shooting off. You see all the sprays of water shooting off from where the line's picked out the water, like kind of happened in slow motion. Got it out and it ended up being the mid 30, the bit like the big mirror. Real, just proper old purple, like, that's just a really, really, really nice fish, like something you'd expect down on these big pits down Oxford, just a real nice carp.